Hey, what are you doing here in the forest? I'm searching for the sacred mountain shrine. Can you take me there? If you want to get to the mountain shrine, you have to help us with something first. Our brother Tar was trapped deep in the forest. We need you to help him. Great idea, Saya. That'll be easy for her. Did you see what she did to that stick guy? Help us free Tar and we'll take you to the mountain shrine. Woohoo! Come on, our village is this way. All right, sounds fantastic, my friends. And for our efforts, we get an additional three rot to add to our repertoire. Something I was a little disappointed about, actually, is the fact that you still have to press X in order to advance the dialogue during those cutscenes out of the fancy higher budget ones. But that's all right. We'll deal with it as we take in the views. So, we now have the map available, but in a very limited capacity, and it really isn't until we explore these areas until it gets a little bit more useful. And uh, it's nice because it does tell you what collectibles you're missing in certain areas, so keep an eye out for that in case you're really going for a completionist run like I'm going to attempt, but we'll see how that goes. Chances are I'll end up missing a thing or two. Um, but yeah, let's go head to the village because unfortunately it finds itself in a bit of a state of disarray. And uh, that's not good. It's actually going to take a while for us to fully purify the village. So as we approach, things are not looking too great. You've got these barriers into certain houses that you can't do anything about. As a matter of fact, they hurt. Um, but we'll get into that a little later. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the heart of the village, which I, uh, ironically is now a dead zone, so let's take care of it. So it turns out there are three of these heart zones and we're gonna go and take everyone out here just so that uh, they don't get in our way. And once we kill all the enemies, we'll hopefully be fine. Your timing is weird, there we go. Thank you, Mr. Man. If you get too close to the poison, you'll actually start, yeah, seeing around the sides of your screen just how annoying it gets. Okay, so no enemies means that the rot are fine. And we have three of these that we need to go ahead and purify. So, with that, the middle one is now made vulnerable, and we can now clear it. And with that, we officially have our main hub available, as well as some insight into Karma, which I already briefly detailed, and upgrades, which are fantastic enhancements to the combat that are incredibly devastating, and the game does really place an emphasis on finding as much Karma and Rot out there as you possibly can. Uh, at the moment, it looks like this is all we have available, which isn't bad at all. I actually am a big fan of the old sprint attack. So we'll go and take that and save up for later because there is quite the skill tree to be unlocked. And let's get started with a bit of light exploring. Get these Zelda ass treasure chests. Love me some good treasure. And you'll notice that we are getting hats that are now made available. And by that, it means available to purchase, which isn't the worst thing in the world. I don't mind it that much because A, it gives you something to buy at the hat cart. But at the same time, uh, it also allows you to purchase multiples of the same hat if you really want to have like an army of bucket heads or something, you know? <laughs> but let's go ahead, add a new friend to the fray. Please and thank you. 
<laughs> and yes, before you say anything, there will be a short cutscene after you collect a rot every single time. But again, I don't really mind it all that much because there are some really adorable, unique animations you can get with some of the harder to reach ones. So it's always a joy seeing one that is just slightly different. But uh, with that having been said and done, let's take a quick stop at the hat card. Why not? They are relatively cheap, and I usually just like to buy at least one of each, but as you can tell, there are a ton to be found in the original version. I believe there were only 53 hats, but I think they've clearly compounded on that. And uh, you can choose how many and which ones to equip with. If you purchase the deluxe version of Kana, obviously you're going to have a singular golden rod, and that one's usually pretty fun to have. But you also get a deluxe staff, which is fun. Which, speaking of, post-anniversary update, they finally added outfits for Kana, and they are so good. They are based off of the characters you meet throughout the game, and uh, they also give you a freebie here with the shadow. I don't think that's really much of a spoiler, but I do like it, and we will be wearing it. So, and uh, we'll also take the deluxe edition, because why not? Yeah, just gonna go ahead and, ugh, that was so <laughs> satisfying, perfect. Now, I think it goes without saying as well that during the pre-rendered cutscenes, you will not have your cosmetics changed during those. I don't think that is <laughs> a reasonable expectation to have of this game with, you know, them still even staying 30 frames per second. It's fine, and I don't mind seeing Vanilla Kana in those, so please don't complain about them, because I've already seen a fair share of that. Um, so back here in this alley, there is actually something called a Cursed Chest, and you want to be careful with these, because they are double-edged knives, and if you've played, you know, <laughs> Breath of the Wild, you will have to usually defeat these enemies in a set amount of time, or without getting hit, or just defeat a number of enemies. Uh, it usually varies between chests, but this one is relatively easy. You just have to be careful when going through it, so. First chest, number one, defeat seven enemies. It's actually reading a little bit like uh, God of War right now. These little, uh, axles, stop it. There you go. Uh, once we build up our uh, lovely courage as well, it would be a good idea to maybe use some of it on these guys. All right, get back. Come here, sir, if you don't mind. Damn, whoop. There we go. Yeah, the double hits are usually hard to get out of your shield from, so. Okay, and now this one right behind you is a man. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do it over you. Oh, you missed. And yeah, just while he's stuck over there, I'll just go and do this. Oh, Ugh, nice. And luckily this one we did not have to do without taking damage, so. Those ones are a little scary. <laughs> To say the absolute least. Uh, do you have a hat in here? Oh no, just a bunch of crystals. Nice. So if you really want, you could take a bit of a jaunt throughout the world and explore. There is a ton that we will not be able to do. And uh, if I miss anything, there will be plenty of opportunities to pick it up a little bit later. That is, unless I, you know, walk past them every time because I assumed I already grabbed it. But... Yeah, this is actually a pretty cozy place, minus all of the dead zones everywhere. And I wonder, is there going to be anything up here? No, not quite. So, these barriers, uh, essentially, these will lead to small challenge areas that, until you find the spirit mail to it, you will not be able to enter. And if you go and inspect the box, it'll actually tell you where it is in the form of a cryptic hint. And it's kind of hard to know where some of that is sometimes, because... Well, it's a fictional game, and you know what does a storeroom look like in this universe, you know? Uh, but was there anything else over here? I don't think there was. Yeah, you're going to be finding a lot of those. But I think for the most part, we are done with our exploration. We don't have to do much else. We need the mask before we can proceed in that direction. So let's go ahead and make our way forward and meet up with the old spirit who will then bestow upon us Taro's mask here in the graveyard. Once you're in the right position, go ahead and pulse away. The 
Rot seem quite fond of you. They're usually timid. <laughs> Something tells me you did not come to our village looking for forest creatures. Hello, spirit. I seek passage to the Sacred Mountain Shrine. Our village is bound to the Shrine's energy. But that power faded long ago. Trapped spirits linger here, tangled in the tragedies of our past. You must help these spirits if you wish to reach the Mountain Shrine. On my way, I met two children. They asked me to help free a boy named Taro. I'm not surprised that Benny and Saya found you. They are clever children, and would do anything for their brother. We have always crafted wooden masks to honor those who have passed on. Placed here, the masks slowly turn to dust aiding the spirit's journey into the next life. My father was a spirit guide. Our traditions are different, but he helped many spirits pass from this life to the next. So you know what happens to spirits unable to move on. Take Taro's mask. It is bound to his spirit and will help you fulfill your promise to the children. Look after Benny and Saya. Their brother's fate will be difficult for them to understand. Absolutely. And I don't know about you, but something about the tenor of that man's voice or just the cadence in which he speaks is kind of sexy. Well, we have spirit masks, and they're very useful for sussing things out in the environment you might not normally find, such as hidden chests, as well as rot that might be, you know, somewhere you might not think they'd be. And the only issue I have with this is the fact that while you're wearing it, you cannot move. So here you can see that there is a sweet poor soul stuck under a rock. He's been smushed for God knows how long. We have to save your, your friend. <laughs> oh my God. He's like, Jesus, what took you guys so long? <laughs> nah, he's fine. He's dandy. And of course, right over there, there is a chest being surrounded by a pool of blood. You know, only the nightmares that you would see in things like Demon Souls. Uh, obviously, if you step in it, it's not gonna be a good time and you will die. So I would recommend against doing that at all costs. But if you take a look around, you can see there are still so many different ways that we can interact with the environment that it is going to make your head spin by the end of the game just because we are extremely limited right now. The game isn't always just going to be swiping enemies with our staff or using our pulse shield and things like that. No, it gets so much more involved later on. And it is a very good time. It's satisfying even though the actual physical hit of your weapons usually is not, as you guys have probably already seen. But now that we have Taro's mask, let's go ahead, approach the barrier, and put it on. What's that? Follow it. Maybe it will lead us to Taro. <laughs> Man, those kids are going to be in for quite the reckoning once they learn the truth about what really happened to their brother. But luckily for them, they have an experienced spirit guide at their side to sort of help them navigate these feelings, which I guess is what Kana does best. Uh, but first off, I am going to enrich my pockets before moving on, and as you can see across the way, we have some floating red wisps which denote enemies that when we approach them, will try to do us harm and kick our butts, and luckily for them, they are being blocked by the greatest barrier of all time. The lack of spam mail is appalling. I haven't seen Toby in a while, he's usually playing with the children across the street, which stands to reason that yeah, we can actually access this right away. But I'm going to take a look in this backyard first, see if there's anything else I can get. You'll see there's a flower on the ground, some sprouts in the garden, and also this gem that has been wedged into a tree. Can't do anything about that just yet, unfortunately, but we will get there sooner rather than later. 
grab me some of them lovely crystals and we're gonna head into this third house which is very conveniently blocked off from the main entrance so if we go along the side here we can go and move this set it right there a very conveniently <laughs> marked area there you go okay nothing we can do about this lovely uh blood fall over there but oh why did you follow me there you go release and we can climb up through the second floor and now freedom plus our first instance of spirit mail that's right kana is the world's greatest postal service member and luckily, something that has been changed from the original pre-anniversary update is that they actually put a symbol on the barrier of the mail that you have in your hand. Now, it's been a fair number of months since I played this, basically since release, so I don't remember if that was actually there. I just remember having trouble finding all of them, but with that... Oh man, that flourish is so good. So now we can approach these little axe holes and uh, do with them with what we know how to do best. Oh shoot, thank you, fellas. Let's try to get you both at the same time if possible. And after these guys spawn, we should have, yeah, another one. Ugh, oof. Yeah, so the thing about master mode is that these guys are just super aggro and will just do everything they can once they spawn to murder us. Shoot, okay. I just, that was a weird sound. Oh, my friends are back. Right in the nick of time. So let's go ahead and get rid of this and bring comfort back to this homestead. I don't know about you, but those are nice moments, and I'm a fan of them. So, you usually get a fair number of goodies upon completing these uh, spirit side quest things, and uh, just don't forget to grab everything before you leave and just assume that, you know, you looted it all. 